What's up, folks? My name is Jaya. I'm a music producer and instrumentalist. A big part of my workflow is recording instruments. And today we're going to dive deep specifically into the sampling feature on machine. I'm going to show you exactly what's happening on the machine while I'm producing. So first, let's talk setup. This is my current setup. Right now I have my guitar plugged into an amp modeling pedal and from here it goes to this AB pedal. My synth is also plugged into this AB pedal. So this AB pedal is a great small footprint solution if you don't want to use a mixer. And this way I can just switch between my guitar and my synth very quickly. And from this AB pedal, it goes to this pedal chain. So right now I'm using a machine's internal audio interface. This pedal right here is a reverb pedal. It's the last pedal that goes before my machine. So this pedal outputs a line level signal. It goes into machine's line input. Let's talk monitoring. It's very important to gain stage while you're recording. You need to be able to mix things, kind of what you hear and what you're playing. And or if you're playing against the sample or you're playing against drums, you need to be able to hear everything. It's important to know where things are. So if you're using machine plus internal interface and you plug it into the stereo line in, all you need to do is here on sampling tab, input, set it to external stereo. Input one is what you need to set it up to. And um, as you can see, there's already a signal there, but you cannot hear anything. So, two ways to hear signals here. One is through the sampling tab. Here, there's monitor, you turn that on. There you go. And the downside of doing this is that you can only hear the dry signal. So. If you hear the reverb, is this a reverb pedal that I have right here. So if I turn it off, it's dry AF. So dry. This is where option two would be beneficial, and most of the time I use this option two. Option two is to listen through a pad. So I'm just gonna turn this off so there's nothing. I go to a pad. And I would go to channel, channel MIDI here. Make sure you go to sound, go to input, audio source, input one. Again, if you're plugging into the line inputs on machine, you would want input one. So you can hear that. This way, this pad becomes some kind of a pass through. Now we're listening to this chain through this one pad. So the benefit of doing this is that you can put an effect on this sound, say machines, uh, reverb effect, go to ROM. You can basically use any of machines effects. You can add delay. Let's go to beat delay or chorus. This is great. And sometimes I put the effects even on, on group instead of the sound. So whatever it is that I'm recording, in whichever sound, I can hear the effects and I can save some DSP by not putting each effects in every sound. And um, this is actually the technique that I use the most instead of monitoring through sampling. All right, cool. So let's start, let's start with an idea. Let's pick a melody loop and we're gonna build things around guitar. That's cool. I'm not feeling that though. Maybe some keys. I think we're vibing with this. So let's load that. Um, it's a little too slow. What's 
the tempo. Tempo is 75. Uh, we loaded that. I usually go... I usually just stretch them. Tempo is already correct. We're gonna need some drums. Let's load some drums. change the hi-hat maybe this ooh I like that that works we get an idea we get some drums let's actually get to sampling so much housekeeping before the actual sampling but this housekeeping is important all right first things first i usually find the key of the sample if we know that it's in a like I'm not vibing with where it is right now, like keys wise. Let's tune it down. semitones lower you know what's disturbing me right now i can hear the bass rumbling on that so let's let's eq the low end sometimes it's just mixing issues just too distracting and i cannot deal with that this is good. A lot of bass frequencies are gone now. And then go. So in that case, I kind of just want to loop that. So this is... What's the length? So 8 bars. We're going to sample exactly that. 8 bars. And uh, make the destination. I mean target. Sound. So whatever it is that I choose before, the sample will go in this pad. When I'm recording a loop, I usually turn off all the um, time-based effects, like turn the echo off, turn the reverb off, so completely dry. So I can add that later. Let's go back to sampling. Let's do that. Let's let that play. Record another one. Maybe something like that. Thank you. 
That seems to work so far. So usually while I'm recording this, I'm already starting to think about the arrangement. I would usually duplicate that pattern. And uh, maybe we're not gonna need this one. So we're gonna go to events, select this and clear. So this pattern would only have the chords and the original sample. And this pattern would have that little melody. And um, why not duplicate another one and um, delete the sample and make it only guitar. That's the key, clear that. This part could be an intro. This part could be a verse. And this part would be a chorus. The one with the melody. So it gradually builds and I organize, I start organizing my patterns the way I would want to structure them later. So that's how I do it. Now let's play around with the synth. At this point, I usually go with another group because I think we got enough going on in this one group. So now I wanna, I wanna play around with the synth, I would create another group. Um, light orange, sure. Select one, I think we're still listening through this pod, aren't we? We are. We're just gonna leave it as is, that's fine. Right now, let's not use loop, let's record one shots. Let's try that. I have my pedals engaged. Ooh, it's beautiful. Let's go on detect mode, actually. Lower the threshold. Actually, let's uh, boost that. Okay, it's a little louder now. Let's catch that. Cool. That's how I usually do it. So, I just go on detect uh, and start that. It's recording now, and I play it back. Mm -hmm. Is enough. Chop that. Make this choke group. Maybe no, just yeah, leave it as is. That much and duplicate that. And I just treat it as a sample. So right now I'm just shaping the ADSR of the samples that are recorded of those one shots. 
maybe we can grab we can grab another one Ooh, that one that one Cool. So what I did there, I just basically recorded a long sample, find the good ones, chop them, and shape the ADSR so it kind of just flows smoothly into the um, beat and the original instrumental. Let's record something. I'd like to hear them longer, to be honest, so let's um, delay that. Add a delay to the whole group. Split that. That's cool. Um, let's record more stuff. Let's record some interesting stuff, textural stuff. There's a delay on this. Let's duplicate this to a new group. Fully dry now. We moved it because this group has delay. So let's delete that. Um, for my chain, I basically have the exact same thing. This bass goes to the amp sim, goes to the rest of the pedals. Aside from the tone, I usually don't change anything. But... Let's see. Let's, let's do two alternatives. One is with short notes, like this. And the other one is long notes, like this. Um, duplicate the pattern and record the bass here. Um, let's do this actually. Yeah, let's do that. Loop, target sound.
create an alternative version of that. Select this, clear that out, select a new pad, sample, do a long take. Let's try that. So um, that was a lot. We recorded a lot of stuff. We started off with this piano sample and we added some guitars to it. We added some melodies. And um, we added some synths. And some interesting textures. That was fun, that part. And together they all sound like... Okay, so final words for me is that one, don't be afraid to make mistakes. You don't have to be the best guitar player in the world in order to record yourself playing guitars. Really get familiar with the sampling tab. Dedicate a block of time to sit down and really mess with the sampling. To try to record a bunch of stuff from various sound sources. Try the microphone even. What does each option do? Are you vibing more with the loop mode or with the detect mode or with the sync mode? Like you don't even have to follow exactly what I do. Once you master sampling, you'll find your own workflow. My techniques right now, my method works best for me. And I'm so used to that right now. It has become muscle memory. Like I already know where things are. And just go wild with it. And don't get too attached to anything. I hope you learn um, a thing or two from this session. And um, thank you for watching this far. And yeah, uh, I hope to see you in the next video.